Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you a day in my life as a Unix and translator intern and talk about the application process of getting a summer internship in university. So let's take it back to late September of 2019. This is when the internship listings are starting to get posted and I started applying. I find internships through my university, but I also search and research for other tech companies that don't have their listings on my uni's website. I started this process by doing research on tech CVs, updating my CV, and writing cover letters for the different internships. Since I almost exclusively applied to software engineering internships, most of my cover letters were almost identical, however, it's important to have a paragraph about why you want to intern for that company specifically in each application. The application format varied a lot, some I submitted by email, others I filled out an online form, and some were a combination of the two. Now it's mid-October and I've applied for 14 internships and I'm having my first interview. The interview went okay, but this was also my second internship interview ever, so I was very nervous. Unfortunately, they ended up not moving on with my application, but this was still great practice for doing interviews in general. Now we're jumping to early January of 2020 and I've now applied to 18 internships in total. At this time, I was invited to do a coding challenge for the first time. If you don't know what a coding challenge is, it's usually a part of many software engineering and other programming related internship applications. It's a test where you get one or more coding tasks where you have the opportunity to show your problem solving skills as well as your theoretical knowledge of common computer science concepts. The point of them is not that you should memorize and know every coding concept from memory but rather show that you can solve a problem by applying the knowledge you have and find relevant resources to find a solution. In other words, Google and Stack Overflow are always helpful when coding and it took a couple of months for me to hear back from this internship in particular and they decided not to move forward with my application. We're now in early April and I had at this point applied to 30 internships. About a month earlier, before lockdown, I had my first in-person interview for a software engineering internship. This was such a great experience and I was really happy with how the interview went overall. To my surprise, I was actually invited onto the next round of the application process which in this case was a coding challenge. This challenge was quite different from the previous one I did and to what I researched as being the standard for these types of challenges. The core idea was still the same, but the challenge was instead of just applying a concept to create this pretend game with a proper user interface, implement some rules you were given, and it had to be a responsive design or at least look okay while using different devices, and it also had to be implemented in React. I had just learned React about two months ago, so this was a huge challenge for me. However, I did a lot of research on the design and in the end I managed to create a somewhat simplified version of what they wanted. Unfortunately, I was not hired for the internship, but considering that I didn't manage to do the challenge perfectly, I was prepared for that outcome. However, I'm really proud that I managed to get through the final part of the application process as only six people out of all the applicants were selected for the final coding challenge. Now it's early May and my uni has now posted internships for the summer where I applied to five. 
I ended up getting three interviews all done over Zoom and at the end I got two offers. In the end, I was standing between a research assistant position where I would conduct interviews with professors and a Unix and translator internships where I would translate a university course in Linux to English. In the end, I chose the Unix and translator internship because of the work hours as the research internship unfortunately didn't offer a 100% summer position. So in total, I applied to 35 internships, did two coding challenges, got five interviews, and in the end, I only got two internship offers. So now we are in present day and here is a day in my life as a Unix and translator intern. My internship is a six week internship and I work remotely from home. At the beginning of each week, I have a short meeting with the professor in the course where I share my progress, ask any questions I have, and get feedback. Before I fully start my workday, I also check my emails and my to-do list that I made for this internship and decide on what I want to work on that day. One thing I really enjoy about this internship is that I'm able to set my own work hours and schedule as well. So I usually start my work between 8 and 9 a.m. and I work until about 3.30 or 4.30 p.m. I also try to block my day so that I do about four hours of translation work and then four hours of admin work. I like to start my days by doing the translating work, so this will consist of translating texts, exams, assignments, and lesson plans. The tools I use for this portion of my work is Word and LaTeX, as well as online dictionaries and the course textbook. I actually find this to be the easiest part of my day as I generally enjoy writing and I get a lot of practice in academic writing as well. Around noon, I have my long break where I will eat lunch and maybe sit outside for a bit before going back to work. The final half of my day is spent doing admin work, which is usually grammar checking, converting assignments to PDFs, uploading what I've translated, and finding additional learning resources like video tutorials and websites that are useful for the course. The tools I use for this portion of my work is Grammarly, Blackboard, YouTube, and Google. I found this to be a lot more tedious and it takes way more time than I initially expected, which is why I set about half of my workday to do this. At the end of the week and my last workday of the week, I email my professor a short work log of what I've accomplished in the past week, which we then discuss in our meeting the following Monday. Then I end my workday by logging my hours and logging off. Even if I didn't land my dream internship, I definitely still learned so many useful skills this summer that I can take with me to a software engineering internship in the future. And I'm also just genuinely grateful that I even got an internship at all this summer. So that was it for a day in my life as a Unix and translator intern. I really hope you enjoyed this video about my internship experience and I hope that this can help you in some way when you're applying to internships for next summer. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.